Gay Talk tonight congratulates all the lesbian and gay couples getting married in New Zealand this week as same-sex marriage becomes legal. We send a huge thank you to Lewis Wall and all the politicians who made this law change possible. Tonight, an actor bringing the legendary Quentin Crisp back to life. Hi everyone, welcome to Gay Talk Tonight, I'm Andrew Whiteside. My guest is Roy Ward, he's an actor, and he's starring as the legendary Quentin Crisp in a play that opens in Auckland this week. Quentin Crisp is a gay icon who became a star late in life after the publication of his autobiography, The Naked Civil Servant. This week, a play based on his life has a short run at Auckland's Basement Theatre. Roy, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Now, you're going to be starring in a show called Resident Alien in mm -hmm. the Basement Theatre, which is basically the, the, the life of Quentin Crisp, or, or bits of Quentin Crisp's life. Yeah, it's been pieced together very cleverly from his writings and his musings from all sorts of different sources, it's all very cleverly cobbled together into a kind of very entertaining monologue. And so it's a big ask because not only are you um, directing it and producing it, you're also the only person on stage. So that's a, that's a big project. That's the scary thing about it, but it's also the exciting thing about it. I haven't done a solo show before in 30 years on and off of being an actor. No one's ever asked me to do it before, so I decided I'd ask myself after all that time I've given myself permission to have a go, and this is the one script that I think I'd ever be brave enough um, so far to have a crack at. So why Quentin Chris? Why did that story resonate with you? He was an influential figure for me because I was growing up and coming out gay in the mid 70s when Quentin suddenly emerged as an international superstar, for very strangely, with the TV adaptation of The Naked Civil Servant, and of course at that stage he was travelling the world and doing his little one-man stage shows himself and answering questions from audiences. and uh, He was such an interesting and eccentric character. And I found this script over ten years ago in a second-hand, not second-hand, in a, a little bookshop in Sydney. And thought, oh, I'll have that for two dollars. And I read it and it was so amusing, as you'd expect, because he was a very witty and, um, uh, you know, challenging man. But it was also oddly moving, and I hadn't quite expected that. So there's a philosophy of Quentin Crisps that runs through it. It's it was a hard life, certainly, and, the, and he got beaten up on more than one occasion. Oh, yeah. I think he, in the play he talks a lot about the hostility of the English. And, of course, very late in life, around the time when most people might be moving into nursing homes, he moved to America instead and became the resident alien of the play's title. And he absolutely loved America. He felt embraced and able to be himself there. I mean, if you think of New York, and you know, it's full of oddballs anyway, so he was quite at home. But yeah, he draws a very strong distinction between the way he was treated in England and the way he was allowed to live and embraced in New York. Do you think he's still relevant today, particularly in countries like New Zealand, where we've moved on a great deal in terms of acceptance of, of gay, gay people? That's another reason to do the play now, because I... In a way, I don't know the answer to that. I think he's worth listening to because the fact that we have moved on so much and we're in danger of being a little bit bland and mainstream these days, aren't we? Don't we need to remind ourselves where we've come from and, and whose shoulders we're standing on? I think you're right, and I think that history can easily be forgotten, mm, and even fairly recent history. Mm. I mean, I, I encountered young, young gay people who don't know it was illegal. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the whole marriage equality thing hasn't, wasn't a crucial issue for me. I keep thinking, what would Quentin Crisp have made of it? I think he would have been completely bewildered by it. Why? Uh, um, he talks a lot about marriage and he's quite scathing and he, I guess he means heterosexual marriage but any long-term commitment and yeah you take that with a grain of salt because that's a reaction to the way he was treated and the fact that he didn't have a lot of love in his life and born at a different time and different circumstances his life would have been completely different. How much do you think of, of the things that he's famous for, the quotes that, are, that are, he's famous for, how much of it was, do you think, his truth and how much of it was almost to get a reaction from people? It's hard to know. It's hard to know. Um, cause, and he's full of contradictions. You know, 
it's not in the play, but apparently he said at some point, AIDS is a fad. And he's very dismissive of AIDS. And, but then apparently after his death, it was discovered that he'd been secretly donating considerable amounts of money to AIDS organisations, you know, while claiming to be quite poor. I, I often wonder if he would have been a difficult man to know, even socially. I think so. Because he was, he was a star, and, it, and I guess in, in his mind, the world did revolve around him. But perhaps that's given his life history, the things that happened to him. It was, there's probably a huge amount of protection there. I think so. That's, that's the interesting thing about the play, because although I assume nearly every word in it is from Quentin's own mouth or his own writings, the idea of the play is that we're in Quentin's famously filthy New York apartment, which will be filthy. I've got a fantastic set designer in it, and the basement studio is a perfect space to recreate a, a really shabby New York apartment. So we're having fun with that. I don't think he ever took people there to entertain them or to meet them, but he would have them call on him and then he would go out and have a free lunch with them and talk as long as they wanted them to. But he says in the play, this is, this is my dressing room and the world is my stage. So the conceit of the play is that the audience actually gets to be there in the room with him, when normally I don't think people would be. So although what you're hearing is a lot of the Quentin persona as he would present it to the world, seeing him in that environment, and it, it's quite challenging, some of the things, that, you know, the filth that he lived in, the downright squalor. He, he, famously, he said, I live in a room that hasn't been dusted for 18 years. After the first four years, it doesn't get any worse. So we're recreating that. But I think seeing him in that environment, waiting for the phone to ring, which is another um, uh, idea that runs through the play. He's waiting for guests to come and will they turn up? They might not. You do get a sense of, well, is he as happy as he says he is? Is he the lonely old man that some people thought he was? Yeah. How much of it is denial and protection? So, big shoes to fill for an actor. Mm -hmm. How are you going to portray him? What, what, what are you doing to bring him to life personally? It comes from the language, because he, he has a very ornate, old-fashioned, Edwardian style of language. And once you lock into that, you start to channel Quentin, I hope. Who knows? And also the, the, the voice is, uh, is challenging because how far do you go with it? He's 90 in the play. This is, this is set in the year that he died. The play actually opened the first production of it in around about the same week that he died. So how to be 90? How to be Quentin Crisp? And how to be a 90-year-old Quentin Crisp? So I was, yeah, I, I think I know what to do. I'm not 90 and hopefully I don't look 90. And I have got very good um, hair and makeup, I think, which was important. And just seeing myself with the hair, I started to see Quentin in the mirror, so hopefully he'll, he'll be there when we want him to be. Fantastic. I don't know, it's not, it's not for me to judge. But I, I feel quite comfortable, scarily comfortable, <laughs> slipping into his skin. I'm interested to know what you think is the secret to a happy or successful, fulfilled kind of life. Do you have thoughts on that? Well, I'm not sure how many thoughts of my own I have on that, but my head is full of Quentin. And interestingly, I know this is um, not why you asked the question, but there's a lot in the play about how do you live a fulfilled life. And I don't want to give too much away, but um, one thing Quentin does say at the end of the play, or near the end of the play, is what matters is not what other people think of you, but what you think of yourself. Don't value your love because it is returned. It makes no difference if your love is requited. Your love is of value to you because you give it. Roy Wood, thank you so much. It's no, been thank a pleasure. Thank you. It's been great. Well, that's Gay Talk tonight. Thank you for watching. I'll be back again very soon. <laughs>